Hello guys, this is Mold, striking one more time again with another Wii project and today I'm going to show off this little guy, which is my Wii Micro. And yeah, I made this basically, I designed uh, the case and stuff and you can build one too. And today I want to show you how basically to do this or give you a slight overview of things you need and what to look out for. So let's start and let's see what we need to build such a Wii Micro. First off, of course you will need a Wii. So this is the Wii motherboard and you don't need any Wii. You need a so-called six-layer Wii, which basically is the type of mainboard that's used. In the earlier versions it is a six-layer. It has a bigger CPU and a different GPU, so it, uses, it creates more heat and yeah, we portableizers don't really like it, but you often end up with a bunch of them lying around, which I did too. But this is why I made this project to give them some use and basically recycle or upcycle them. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a six layer Wii. And first thing you need to do is to soft mod it. I would prefer uh, the BB loader. You can download on the BitBuild website because um, it removes the need for the Wi-Fi module, so we can throw this away. And yeah, we will also salvage the Bluetooth module, which I have right here, for this side. And of course, we cut out the main part of the mainboard, which um, yeah, I designed a little bit bigger trim for this, which makes it way easier to trim and um, yeah, to keep the USB port and the AV port and the sensor bar port. So we basically just cut out this part of the main board. And yeah, that's it. And also I use um, a few more parts from the main board, or you can use. This is optional. This is the so-called MX chip. Um, it stores like some fonts for the GameCube and the real-time clock. And it's not necessarily needed. It's needed for a few games and I found out that it's needed for the WaveBird controller to work properly. So I would recommend to re um, relocate this one too. So you can cut this out from the board too. It comes right here in the middle. And also I recycled the battery slot, which is on the other side of the main board, which holds the RTC battery. You can cut this guy out too, and then just recycle it in the Wii Micro. Um, oh yeah, I, I nearly forgot. Of course we need some GameCube ports, and we can cut them off from the main board too. As you can see, there's still some PCB on here. Um, and this is just the way we're going to reuse this. So this is everything we need from the main board. We will also keep the original fan. As you can see on the trim board, you still got this plug, so you can still plug in the fan and it will just work once you have relocated five volts. And we will also reuse the stock heatsink which is one of the reasons why this case came out pretty big, but I didn't want to... Um, I wanted to require as less additional parts than possible, so this is why um, I wanted to, to reuse the original heatsink. Yeah, so these are the parts that we keep from the mainboard. Bluetooth module, MX chip, battery clip, GameCube controller ports, the main part, fan, and the heatsink. So let's put this to the side. Let's see what else we need. Oh yeah, we, we also keep a few of the screws from the Wii. I, all the screws that you need for this build, you can uh, you get from your Wii when disassembling it. So there are quite a few different ones. Um, there is a guide on BitBuild um, where I wrote down which screw use to use where, so check this out. So besides that, so this is just everything from the Wii. Now comes uh, come the additional parts that you 
you'll need to buy, and it's not so many, you will need a uh, replacement for the power supply. So this is one of the typical um, regulators that we use, that Portabilizers use for years, the PTH 080801. I'm just not kidding, it's really called WA. Um, yeah, it's a fairly cheap uh, regulator, it costs about 7 euros uh, in Europe. And you need four of them for 5 volts, 3.3 volts, uh, 1.15 volts and 1 volt. So you need to buy four of these. And you will need a power switch. I also had a bunch of these lying around. Um, very simple. It doesn't even matter if you have double, uh, double or single uh, switches. All that matters is that, yeah, they're basically round and have a six millimeter hole to put them in. And you will also need a barrel jack for the power supply. And of course you will need a power supply which fits the barrel jack. And the power supply can be uh, anything from, I would say, 9 to 12 volts. I use 12 volts because I also have a bunch of these um, lying around. This is why I want to also wanted to use these. So these are the the few additional parts that we need. Um, of course we need some 3D printed parts. As you can see, I got already a few models here. So let's take a look um, at the 3D printed parts that you need for this build. So this is the latest case I printed. Um, it's PET from Prusaman, the orange one. Um, with this design you can all the uh, Files are download uh, are free to use and distribute and modify and yeah, whatsoever. So this is the main body, as you can see. It's um, basically the whole case. Um, on the inside, you will find all the holders for um, the parts that we salvaged from the wheel. Like in the front, you can put the Bluetooth module, which just goes right in here. Then we have the battery clip. Um, which fits in here and with the battery, of course. Let me just grab one. This is also, you can also reuse the battery from the Wii if it's still good. So you just put this in like this. Goes right in here. And in the next slot you can put the MX chip. So we have all the relocations nicely on the side here. There's very le uh, little space and it's pretty nice. Uh, the next thing over here is um, other buttons, the synchronize and the reset button. I made this little bracket here where you can just put in a tagged, uh, two tagged buttons. Oh yeah, you need two tagged buttons too. Sorry, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, you put them in here, bend over the pins and they hold. You can solder to them on the back and yeah, you just screw them in right here. So that works very nice. Um, also, if if they are, the tech buttons you use are too short to look out, you uh, made some very, very tiny buttons that you can put in here and um, yeah, they will make it more accessible. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, once we have the buttons put in here, um, let's move to the back. Just to give you a slight overview, I will take one of the models I already did. So on the back we have the AV output and uh, the sensor bar output and the USB of course from the main board. Here's a power switch and there's a barrel jack and also the fan exhaust. Um, one thing that's pretty funny and happened by accident is that the mainboard, the actual Wii mainboard, is sitting, sitting upside down in here. Um, first I thought, oh, I need to change it, but actually it's pretty cool because now we don't need any visible fan needs on the front or whatever. We just have this one on the back and on the bottom. I changed this a little bit in a later design. It looks like this. Um, yeah, so you 
basically don't see any fan vents from the front, which is pretty handy. Um, yeah, we have the Noldendo logo over here. Um, I also made a version with without any logo on the top or on the side, so you can modify it however you like. And we have the GameCube ports in the front, marked with 1, 2, 4. And here inside you can see the synchronize and the reset button. Also you have, uh, you need to print some stand feeds. This is necessary because um, obviously the fan vent is on the bottom and if you don't have any feed to rise it up from the from the bottom, um, it's not able to, to pull in any air and it will probably overheat. So um, you really want to put on some feet here. You could basically even use the rubber feet from the Wii if you want to salvage them. Um, I wanted to try this on the next one. Maybe this, uh, I think, yeah, it will work and it's probably pretty nice because you have to, then you have some rubber feet. But you can also just print them as I got these here. Um, yeah, print that and then you just screw them on the bottom. So you basically don't need to glue anything, you can um, screw down everything with the screws from the Wii. So no additional screws needed. Um, yeah, what else do we got? Of course we have the screw ports for um, the mainboard, so the heatsink and the fan on the back. I can just put in the mainboard so you can actually see this. So you can just put it in right here. As you can see, fits nicely in here. Basically uses all the space. And then you have four screw ports for the heatsink. And the two on the back for the fan. And that's basically it. You can screw everything down and it will hold and be nice. Yeah, so much for the case. Um, oh yeah, the GC uh, Rampu controller ports. Um, as you can see on the bottom plate, there are these little holders or screw ports, screw holes, whatever. Um, this is where you can screw down the GC ports like this. So you just put them on here, screw them down. Of course you need to rewire them. Oh, and you need to cut away these little black plastic pins on the bottom. You can just cut them off, maybe sand them down a little bit. And yeah, then screw this guy on here. Basically keep it like this and I will show you on the wired up module. So this is another finished one I got. It's an earlier prototype, so it's not that nice. So after assembling it, you basically just pull it out like this. And now you can see the empty ports in the front, which are um, connected to the power and the data lines. And in the back you can see the other modules, the MX chip and so on. And also you see this are the regulators. I didn't talk about these yet. Um, I also made this little regulator holder board, which is for the um, PDH regulators that I've been talking about earlier. So you can print this and then basically just um, stick them in right here. Um, if the print is good. <laughs> the other ones just fit right in there. Maybe you need to clean up the print a little bit if there's something that doesn't fit so good. Anyways, um, yeah, you can put them in and on the back you can also see which voltage um, you can put on them and you can just wire to them at the, uh, the back and also of course on the front. And the nice thing is you can screw this guy to the mainboard. I just need to take the mainboard again. Um, so in my trim I kept basically the whole um, part where the um, memory card slot sits. And in these holes you can 
screw down this little holder which makes it really really nice i really like this it's so clean um yeah and there are these very tiny 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 black screws uh, where you can just screw them together i really love this one it's really great um, also you can use, if you don't want to use the PTH regulators, you can also get the RVL PSU from the BitBuild store. I will make a holder for that later once I get my one from the store. Yeah. So now you can see all the internals. As I just showed you, here is the main board, everything is screwed down and holds very nicely. So there's nothing that will fall apart or whatever. We got the switch on the back and the barrel jack, everything wired up. Um, it's very, very, fairly easy to do, especially compared to a whole Wii portable where you need batteries and charging and a screen and so on. This is a very easy project. You just cut up the main board, you have nearly every part, and yeah, then just put it together. Still, it's, of course, it's still. Um, Nothing that you can just do if you never sold it or whatever. You still need a soldering station and quite a few tools, uh, magnet wire, different kinds of wires, stranded wire, uh, and different sizes, uh, and so on. And a Dremel, of course, to cut up the mainboard. But besides that, it's fairly easy. Yeah, so once you get everything wired up, tested and working, you can just Put this together by sliding in the GC ports in the front, putting it down, watch your fingers, and then, then just use some Wii screws to close up the case. And you're ready to go! Thanks for watching this little video, I hope you liked it and yeah, let me know what you Think about this project and if you're building one I would, would be happy to see some pictures and I will leave all the links to the yeah basically guide and the files in the description so you can build one on your own. This is a Nordendo Micro.